All right, let's talk about some of the outdated strategies in Google Ads that I don't use anymore. And the reason why I don't use them anymore is not only do they not work, but they can actually cost your business lots of money. The reason for why these strategies don't work anymore has come as a result of the fact that the search network is changing, the way that people are interacting with search. There's more search capabilities inside of social media platforms. Obviously, people are using large language models as well. But one of the more alarming stats that a lot of people aren't paying enough attention to is that yes, Google usage is increasing in the sense of the actual numbers of search is increasing, but what is decreasing is the number of clicks. And the main reason for that is purely it comes down to the fact that with AO overviews and IO mode, that people don't need to click on search results in order to get the information that they need. So because so much has changed in the way that people are searching, it means that we need to update our Google Ads strategies. And unfortunately, some of the tried and tested Google Ads strategies just don't work anymore. I want to be really, really clear on this. Some of these strategies which I'm about to share are strategies that I loved and I kind of wish we still had them. But obviously as a performance marketer, keyword being performance, you've got to really update your strategies and work on what is seeing the results and what is seeing the performance rather than any long held dogmas or beliefs that you had about Google Ads. So let's jump into those Google Ads strategies which don't work anymore. Now with this, there is a far more bigger list that we could go through, but what I'm really focusing on is the ones which I feel are the biggest and the most common that we see here at the Fine Digital Academy where we're reviewing accounts and going through different audits. These are the mistakes that keep coming up time and time and time again. That's why I wanted to address them in this video. There's six that we're gonna be going through and the first three all have to do with your keyword strategy. The first one is I thought that in 2025, I wouldn't still be saying this because I started saying this back in, what was it, 2022. The whole thing is that SCAGs, single word keywords, they are dead. They've been dead for a long time, but they still keep popping up and rearing their so-called ugly head. If you're new to Google Ads and you have no idea what SCAGs are, SCAGs are single keyword ad groups, where in some cases you'd have a campaign with 20 different ad groups and all those ad groups having single keywords targeted. So you'd have exact match keywords, or you may even have phrase match, but it would essentially be for really, really small variations. So when I started Google Ads, it was for our villa resort in Bali. So we would have different ad groups, one for villa accommodation or for private villas. They would all be segmented depending on the actual keyword search term that we were targeting. And the reason for why this doesn't work anymore or why we don't recommend it is because Google has changed the match types with the biggest one being that exact match is not exact match anymore. In the, you know, let's call it the good old days, although I don't really think Think they were good old days, but you know what I'm trying to say. If you were targeting, say for example, one bedroom Seminyak Villa, if you set that as an exact match, it had to be in that order. And if it was in a different order, it had different kit words at the end of it, your ad would not appear. That was really, really great. Then Google did start tinkering with it. They started to add this thing called close variants. And then they started to add misspellings and all these different things. Whereas right now, exact match pretty much functions like phrase match used to. It's all about intent and it's all about meaning. And the example that Google's giving on its site right now is if you you're targeting exact match furniture store. If someone searched home furnishing store, your ads would also appear. And that's where your single keyword ad group falls down. If you've got all these segmented ad groups, what will happen is that you'll get a whole collection of your ad groups, which is not getting any volume because those search terms, which you're targeting in the low volume ad groups are appearing in the higher volume ad groups. So the way that you go through and check this, go into your campaign, go to your search terms. When you do a search term, what you wanna do is you wanna be seeing other the same keywords, which are appearing across different ad groups. Good way of thinking about it is this. Think about relevancy. The landing page that you're sending people to is that what are the keyword themes that are relevant for that landing page? And the other good thing is by moving to a STAGS framework, which is single theme ad group. So I still very much believe in having some segmentation inside of your Google Ads campaigns. It's just rather than doing it at the keyword level, you're doing it at the theme level. Thinking about what could people potentially search that's gonna be relevant to the ad copy and gonna be relevant to the landing page. The good news is, is as well is it makes it easier for your accounts manage and it's also as well much quicker to get the ad copy so the headlines and descriptions testing inside of Google Ads. So deaf to skags. Now we've mentioned this before number two is phrase match. Now I want to give a warning here that if you've got phrase match keywords that are performing well inside of your Google Ads search campaigns please don't just turn them off because you've seen this video. However just be mindful the phrase match is probably not working like the phrase match used to work but as I said if you're still getting good results don't change it but moving forward for 
me, I know that when we start a new Google Ads campaign or some new ad groups, we don't use phrase match. I'm only using exact match and I'm only using broad batch. Now let me explain the reason for why. And that comes back to, I kind of touched on it earlier. Phrase match used to be my favorite type of keyword match type. In fact, broad match modifier, I absolutely loved it. It was an amazing, amazing time for Google Ads. But hey, it's gone, it's changed. Now that Google is going on intent and the meaning of that search term, you need to remember that obviously with exact match, it's not actually exact match. And the benefit of phrase match was that with phrase match is that you could basically go Google as long as it's saying these words, so you can go through and really refine it through. But now you can't do that. It's all about the phrase and the meaning that they are searching. And remember this comes back to now that we've got AI mode and now that we've got chat-based search engines, we're not targeting by keywords anymore. We're targeting by inquiries and we're targeting by what people are wanting to find on the internet. And the second thing why I don't use phrase match anymore is it comes back to the targeting signals. Now, there are actually six signals and you can see them right here. And this is an image which was from Google. What you can see in there, broad match is the only match type which uses all of those user signals, which not only includes the user intent, other keywords inside of the ad group, the landing page is going to, the expected click-through ratio. And you'll notice that the phrase and exact actually use the same signals. So once again, that just becomes another reason why there's no extra benefit of running phrase. I do see a clear benefit in running some exact match keywords if broad match works for your account running broad. And that's why we go between exact and broad. All right, so let's get into number three of the strategies that I don't use inside of Google Ads anymore. And this one is still keyword related. And this one actually appears on my Google Ads optimization checklist. If you are new to Google Ads or you want a strategic approach in how to optimize your accounts in the right way, if you want to get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist, and this is a checklist which which not only lists out all of the different optimization actions that you need to complete, but also lets you know how often you should be completing these. You can just follow that link in the description below and you can get that for free. Even though we still recommend that you should be adding negative keywords to your campaigns, a strategy that I don't use anymore is adding hundreds or even thousands of negative keywords to different search and shopping campaigns. So the strategy that doesn't work anymore is adding too many negative keywords. This once again comes back to, and you're seeing an overwhelming theme of because Google is changing the way that its keyword match types work, it's also leveraging a lot more on smart bidding, is that when we used to you know, manage Google Ads campaigns, it was very much around trying to find the perfect search term in order to target because we knew that if someone searched that, they would convert. Whereas remembering is that more and more, and as we move ahead in the coming months and years, is that this is gonna be happening less and less. People aren't searching individual search terms. They're more talking in discussions and more talking, asking questions. So it's all about that intent. By adding in negative keywords or too many negative keywords, you can really, really limit the performance of your campaigns. If you've got some existing campaigns that are performing well, but they've got hundreds or thousands of negative keywords attached to them, what we are doing in our accounts is that we're removing them in batches. And what I mean by that is that we're downloading the lists of negative keywords and removing say 10% of them or 20% of them. Wait to see results, then we'll remove another 10 or 20%. Wait to see results. And really want to see where that balances out. In all cases, we've seen an increased performance by removing some negative keywords. So that brings us to the case of where and when should you be using negative keywords. And for me, negative keywords are still really, really strategic. But what you want to be looking at is not removing phrases which just don't convert. It's more about removing phrases that you don't want Google to test. Now, let me give you two examples, which will try to help explain this so that you can potentially have a new rationale for how you add negative keywords to your account. One example would be that if you're a lead generation business and you were installing air conditioning units, but you only did the installation, you didn't do any maintenance and you didn't want any work for maintenance or ongoing maintenance of air conditioning that is already installed, you would add negative keywords around installation. Or let me give you a further example once again, using the air conditioner, if you only installed split system air conditioning units and you didn't do ducted aircon, you would then obviously add ducted aircon as a negative keyword. Or let's just say you're an e-commerce brand and your products were only suitable for adults and you didn't have products for kids. But if that product could also be used for kids, you would then add kids as a negative keyword. So what I want you to think about is that when you're adding negative keywords, you're not trying to refine it down to the perfect search. What you're wanting to do is add negative keywords 
to kind of take out of the testing pool things which you know won't convert because you're not offering those service or, or you're not offering those products. All right, number four, and this one is also similar to negative keywords and it's all about IP blockers or adding extensive lists of IPs to block. I've never been a big fan of IP blocking tools. They'll remain nameless, but you know the ones I'm talking about. And it really just comes down to me for performance. We've never really, really seen value for money in them. And what we'll do when we take on an account or when we're reviewing an account, one of the first things we'll do if they do have IP blocking software available on their campaigns, we will do two things. One, we will firstly pause it so they're not adding in the extra. We then obviously get that list of IPs that have been added and we remove them from the account. We keep them in a file if we need to add them back and then we just wait four to six weeks to see the data. And in all cases that we've done this, one of two things have happened. One, nothing happens at all in the sense of the results just continue on and we can see that there's no value for money there so we stop the service or secondly and this one happens more often than not is that the results actually increase and then obviously we cancel that membership and just keep moving on so I don't want to spend too much time on it, but don't waste the money on IP blockers. All right, now let's get to the last two. And I'm going to give one example for e-commerce and number six is going to be for lead gen. But let's firstly start with e-commerce. And this is all about keyword stuffing your product titles. With your product titles for e-commerce, especially if you're a starting brand and you don't have a massive brand identity, what you really want to be thinking about, don't say the same keyword in three different ways, thinking that that's going to give you this extra artificial boost. Remember with your product titles, titles is that Google is once again looking at the meaning. So you only need to have really one real solid product title, keyword focused product title at the start of your product title. Then if you want to, you can put your brand and then you can put the product modifiers in there. Remembering that within your feed, you can add the different attributes, which is going to give that a greater explanation of what type of keywords you want to be searching for your product. So let me just give you an example. If you were selling a range of pillows, which was specially designed for side sleepers, a bad product title would be to have your product titles to be something like pillows for side sleeper, side sleeping pillows, pillows to help neck pain. That would be a bad product title because you're essentially saying the same thing three times. Whereas a good product title would be something like side sleeping pillow or pillow for side sleepers. Then you could add in your brand name and then you could add in some different product modifiers. So whether it's a latex pillow, whether it's a feather pillow, what are the materials there? whether it's got a bamboo cover, all of those different things which people could potentially search for. So what I want you to think about is to have your product title or keyword focus, brand name, and then some different product modifiers. And then finally, number six, and this one is gonna be for lead generation businesses. And that is all about only using search. If you're a lead generation business, yes, search is gonna be the main campaign type you're using. It'll also be the first type of campaign you're using. But at some stage, you are gonna to need to reach out to Performance Max and other types of campaigns. But there is a lot of messaging out in the market that Performance Max is bad for lead gen and that's just simply not true. But there are some big major warnings that do come with that that you need to make sure you're using Performance Max in the right way. Now because this is such a big topic if you'd like to learn more about how to use Performance Max for lead generation I want you to go through and watch this video right now or if you'd like to learn more about smart bidding I want you to go through and watch this video right here. Hey thank you for joining me my name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy and remember if you want to get access to my Google Ads optimization checklist just make sure you follow that link in the description below. Look forward to seeing you in one of these videos right now.